Hey guys, Movie Fan here to bring you a new Cosplay Tuesday. You might remember not too long ago I made a Megazord costume and it came out really good. However, it did have some hiccups. Now, I already talked about the helmet and how I fixed that. So now I'm going to be talking about the arms. I love the design and it does work really well having that rod in here so I could just hold on to it. It's very simple yet very effective at the same time. But I couldn't really hold on to the sword very well because you know it was just sitting in there and unfortunately the sword was a little too heavy for it so it started to rip it off but fortunately it held until the costume contest was done but obviously I needed to do a slight rethink now you can see the design here it's good I like it and you know it's useful but of course we could do a little bit better than that so I decided to do just that and I created a whole new set of lower arms and they came out even better than I had hoped. Pretty cool, huh? Now in order to do this, you'll need the following supplies. Cardboard, heavy duty Velcro, a pen or a pencil, a ruler, fabric, it can be gray or black, whatever you prefer, a sewing machine. You'll also need hot glue and super glue. I recommend crazy glue. That stuff really works. Black duct tape, gray duct tape, red duct tape, and yellow duct tape. Now, in order to start, the first you want to do is draw a template of your hand on a piece of paper. For me, I use poster board. Now, how you do this is really quite simple. All you gotta do is just lay your arm flat on a piece of paper and just trace around your actual hand. Make sure it goes all the way up part way towards your forearm. I highly recommend that. And when you're done tracing, You'll want to trace just a little bit outside the perimeter there. Now you'll want to exaggerate a little because we're going to be working with pieces of fabric here and we're going to sew this together ourselves. Another note, I recommend that when you do the gaps in the fingers, you want to exaggerate a little on the outside, but you want it to go real deep so it'll connect right there and so your, your hand fits in real nice because you don't want it to stop right about here. So keep that in mind. And after you're done drawing, just simply cut it out. Okay, when you do that, grab yourself some pieces of fabric. I happen to have an old pair of pants lying around that was gray, and I thought that gray would be a nice touch to it. So I just cut the legs off to the length I wanted them. I grabbed my piece of paper and traced it right onto the fabric itself. Trace four templates out on the fabric, and then you just sew them together. Now, I'm no seamstress, but I'll give you a few tips. What you got to do is get the fabric, just line them up very carefully, and pin it. Now, you'll want to pin it just a little bit below where you want to work, and you're just going to have to carefully sew the way in. Again, I'm no seamstress, but I do all right. And, you know, there's a lot of sewing videos that will give you better tips than I can. So, I'll put some links below so you can find them. When you're done sewing it, you'll want to check and make sure there's no gaps. Always double check, and I highly recommend you do a double stitch. When you're done there, pull the fabric inside out, and there you have a proper glove. Repeat the step one more time. Now, we're going to work on the knuckles and the back piece of the hand. Now, in order to make the fingers, first you're going to have to make yourself a template. What you do is grab yourself a piece of paper. I use poster board. And just simply put your finger on there and draw a line as to where the knuckles are, just like this. After that, grab yourself a little ruler and draw a straight line where the knuckles meet and section it all off with a straight line going horizontally. By this point, you should have three little boxes. Okay, next we're going to start at the top for this one. We're going to measure out from the horizontal parts a straight line of one centimeter on either side. Then do the bottom. Draw a straight line going down where they touch. And, of course, fill in the sides like so. Okay, now we got to do a little extra for the fingertip part. How we're going to do this is we're going to get our ruler once again, and on that vertical line, we're going to draw a straight line going one centimeter up. Then we're going to connect the ends of those two lines horizontally like so. And then we're going to draw another three centimeters going up once again. And we're going to close that box right there. After that, all we got to do is cut all the pieces out, as you see them right here, including the fingertip. You got to cut that little T shape off. And after you get your template ready, just put it on a piece of cardboard and trace it out. Cut it out and bend it just where it's marked. Be sure to label it. You'll probably have to experiment here and there because everybody's hands are different. And you may not get this right the first time, but that's okay. 
you know, if you got scrap cardboard, well, don't worry about it. But of course, there's three special things that need to be done a certain way. First, you got the back of the hand. That'd be right here, basically. And there's a simple way to determine as to how to do that. What you need to do is get yourself some saran wrap or a plastic bag, as I did. Wrap your entire hand with it and then wrap your hand with duct tape, just ending at the knuckles. Next, you grab your marker and trace where the back of your hand is. Then grab a good pair of scissors and cut the tape in the bag off. Be very careful when you do this. After you do that, cut around the lines that you just drew, and then place it on a poster board and trace it, and then cut it out. And there you got the template for the back of your hand. After that, just trace it onto cardboard and cut it out. For the knuckles here, I determined that I needed a special bar put on there. So I just simply got a piece of poster board and just did it like so. So it would go simply around. Simple. All I had to do is just uh, trace this out. After that, just trace it onto cardboard and cut it out. After you create your pieces, you want to duct tape them. And it's really quite simple. All you got to do is just duct tape the outer face and just trim around the edges and fold them in very carefully. But most importantly, you don't want to duct tape the back as well because we're going to need that for our Velcro so it'll stick. Now all we got to do is make the fingertips. First you want to bend the sides up, pull in that one centimeter piece right there, and then just fold over the big square in the back. Tape it together and cover it with black duct tape. And there you have your fingertips. When you got your pieces duct tape, all you got to do is grab some heavy duty Velcro and you're going to cut out strips that match the inner parts of your fingers and of course the back of your hand and the front of your knuckles. Now with the fingertips, it's going to be a little tricky. I started with them first. What I did was I cut the Velcro pieces into the right shape that I wanted for the tips to sit in. After I peeled the back off, I put them into place and held them there. And I got the Velcro pieces, I put them into the tips themselves, held them in place, and when I was done, I put my hand right in the glove, and I carefully put them on, one at a time. Now, you might have to do a little maneuvering, but it does work. You just put it on there, and you hold it, and I mean hold it. And all you gotta do is just repeat the process for the other fingers. Now, next you'll wanna create a little box for your arm. How I did this was I measured from my wrist all the way to the upper forearm right about here. And I just simply cut it to shape. I made four pieces, created a simple box. Of course, you'll want to repeat this process one more time. That way you get the other arm. And of course, when you cut your four pieces out, duct tape them together. Be sure to test it by putting your arm in there to make sure it'll fit. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to attach the glove to the arm itself. Unfortunately, when I was making this, somehow I lost the footage. I'm not sure if I paused it and forgot to turn it back on or what. So, unfortunately, I have to try to describe it and give you a fair idea the best I can. So, but basically, this is what I did. I got the box. Now, this was before all this got attached. And what I did was, if you could see back there, I added Velcro to the glove itself. What I did was, I put the glove on my hand and I put Velcro on both sides of my wrist. And I'm talking both the sticky side and the soft side. The soft side obviously going up, sticky side will be going down. And after I got both Velcros on, I pulled my hand out of the glove and I peeled off the protective covering so I would be able to stick it to the box. And I carefully maneuvered my hand right into the glove, something like this, and I had the hand move right in there, right to where I wanted it, and then I carefully pushed it up and then pushed it down. And of course, I had that thing jammed in there for a good while on both sides. That way I could get a good seal. And now that we've done that, we can build the outer shell. Now, obviously, it's too thin to have as is, so we need to create an outer shell to widen out the arm. And how you do that is you measure out six inches of cardboard and just cut it four times. Be sure to, of course, cut it to the exact length of your arm. Now, how I started, of course, was I started on the sides of the arm because that's going to be a key point here. First, you want to determine uh, which is dead center on there. You can put the box right in the center there if you can eyeball that, right? How I did it was I put it what looked like the center. I got my carpenter square out 
and I carefully checked it multiple times to make sure it was equal. When it was equal on either side, I simply just drew a line on both sides. For me, the side pieces literally measured about one and three eighths between the center and the outside. For you, it might be different, so don't necessarily take my word for it, but take that into consideration though. Once you mark it, do the same for the other one. Get yourself some crazy glue and glue it into place. Leave it overnight for best results. Next, you'll want to get the other two pieces, line them up right on the edges, and glue them together with your hot glue gun. Again, after you glue it, leave it alone overnight to dry. Of course, you'll notice that the front and the back have big gaps in there, so you'll want to cut out some small pieces to cover them. I don't really have any set measurements for you, just all you got to do is just cut some piece, small pieces to size and glue them to, into place. And after you do that, finish it off with gray duct tape. Just cover the front and the sides. Do not cover the top. That's very important. Now next we're going to work on the iconic top and bottom pieces. All you got to do is just draw this kind of image right here. How you do it, it's kind of up to you. I just kind of eyeballed it and uh, it worked for me. I suggest if you want to make sure you got it right, just uh, line it up with what you got there. Try and see if the circle piece that you cut is uh, lining up just right. I had to check it multiple times to make sure it lined up right because you'll want it to fold over to attach right here and, of course, here. I saw what I liked and I was very happy with it. Of course, I tested it by folding it, just carefully folding it like that. And that's perfect. That's just the way I want it. Now, as you see what I'm doing with my hands, I'm only doing the very front of the folds to the rest of it you want it to fan out a little once you get that just the way you like it we're going to work on the circles now obviously for this we want to make sure it fits right so i found an old can of rust-oleum and so i just drew that on there and i cut it out with my utility knife after that cover the top with gray duct tape of course you'll have to cut around the edges a little and you'll have to do this right here what i'm doing is i'm cutting some little snips so it'll go completely around the circle and just fold them in. Next, pull out some yellow duct tape and lay it on your board there. Now we're going to have to make a smaller circle so it'll sit in the center. So I just found this little thing here and I just simply put it on there and cut it out. When I was done, I put it into place. When you're done, repeat the process one more time. And then we grab the hot glue gun and glue it right onto the template circle that we got there. Just let it dry overnight and next we cover the front of the top with black duct tape. Now I covered it only halfway because in the middle we're gonna mix it up a little but first I want to uncover the circle. What you do is you grab another circular object something that leaves just a little bit of black on the edge. Put it there, grab a utility knife and carefully cut out the top layer and then just uh, peel it off. Now that we're done there, we're gonna grab some gray duct tape and tape it right there. Just make it big enough to give us a nice little line on both sides there and just cover this much. Finish the rest of it off with black duct tape. After that, grab some red duct tape and we're gonna cover a lot of the gray duct tape. You don't wanna cover all of it, just enough to leave this nice little edge there on either side. And after that, grab some yellow duct tape again and again, you don't want to cover the entire red duct tape. You just want to leave a little edge there, and there you go. And when you're done there, grab your hot glue gun, glue the back right there, put it into place and hold it there for a little while. And next, you want to fold over the edges. Be sure to put some hot glue on there. I recommend that after you put glue on them and fold those pieces over, cover them with gray duct tape to hold them in place. And then, of course, top it off with black duct tape so it looks good. Repeat the process on the other side, and there you have a Power Rangers arm. It's perfect. You can actually move. You can actually grab stuff with. Of course, you'll want to repeat uh, the process one more time, and then you'll have two. Now, I did it like this because no one has ever done it like this before, at least not to the best of my knowledge. I've seen solid fists like what I did, and I've seen a few people just get a pair of black gloves and just put them on. One of my new friends, Watchman, did that when he went to his local Comic-Con, and 
he it worked for him and i cannot deny it that works for a lot of people but i wanted to be one of the first people to try something real new to make it look a little bit more robotic which is, to best of my knowledge has never been done before even in the series it was just clearly just a regular glove now of course you could use black fabric instead of gray but i thought it gave it a better uh, curve appeal to it it makes it look more interesting i highly recommend you give this a try it's pretty tedious to do but when you're done it looks great even better than my first model i suggest that if you want to have a megazord costume give it a try it's totally worth it well i hope i was able to help everyone to make the something like this possible because again i don't think anyone's ever tried anything like this before at least not in megazord anyway so i hope you give it a try and if you do let me know how it works for you but until then, this is Movie Fan, signing off.